welcome delegates to the presentation of our project, Production of 2G Bioethanol by a Continuous Process. If the fossil fuels are compared with bioethanol, the CO2 generated by using fossil fuels generated from crude oil, the CO2 keeps on accumulating in the atmosphere and it leads to global warming and other effects on the climate. Whereas by using bioethanol, it is obtained from transforming the biomass. So the CO2 generated by using this uh, bioethanol in the automobiles enters the atmosphere, but it is again absorbed by the plants in the photosynthesis process. Hence, it leads to a sustainable level of CO2 in the atmosphere. Another reason is that the petrol price is increasing every day. So to compensate that, we can use bioethanol in place of petrol and gradually become energy independent country. The need for ethanol is popularized by the Indian government as a mandate so that we can have E20 fuel and in future flexi fuels adopting ethanol as the driving fuel. Owing to such encouragement, a startup company named ASN Fuels Private Limited, registered at Bangalore, has approached IIT Tirupati to establish a pilot plant for 2G bioethanol with the strategic investment of uh, HPCL Mumbai. And an MOU was signed to this effect under the able guidance of our director, Professor K. N. Satinarena, and the partners, uh, Mr. D. M. Giri and G. V. Sumanth of ASN Fuels Private Limited with the consultant as Dr. T. Sunil Kumar, myself of Chemical Engineering Department. Welcome delegates to the pilot plant jointly developed by ASN Fuels Private Limited and IIT Tirupati. I'm going to explain the transformation that the raw material like corn cob goes through in various subunit operations in the process of producing ethanol. We start with corn cob which is obtained after deseeding this corn and this is dried and powdered. So the powder looks like this, very fine particle size and this is subjected to thermochemical pretreatment process where it, it uh, liberates cellulose from lignin. So the obtained cellulose is again in the powder form, it can have some moisture content and the wash liquor is spray dried to produce lignin powder as byproduct. Now the cellulose moist powder is sacrificed, that means it is mixed with enzymes and reacted in a reactor to produce glucose water solution. The glucose water solution is further added with yeast to get ethanol water solution and this ethanol water solution contains small amount of ethanol and large amount of water. Therefore, it is subjected to distillation where it can produce up to 94 to 95% of ethanol and the balanced water is also removed by dehydration using molecular uh, sieve zeolite materials. Now I am going to explain the novelty of our process equipment. This is a tubular manifold reactor in which there is a steel tube carrying the slurry of cellulose and enzyme water at certain temperature being produced are obtained by contacting with hot water flowing in a surrounded tube. So it is a tubular heat exchanger or we call it as tubular manifold reactor which has many turns and so that we can appropriately extend its length by another suitable material like HDPE for obtaining a large uh, residence time to process large amount of uh, material. So this is a this concept that can be scaled up and which we will explain in further uh, part of our presentation that it can be beneficial to sugar factories as an add-on reactor. Hi, I am uh, DM Giri, Chairman ASN Fuels Bangalore and uh, right now uh, we are at our uh, uh, pilot plant of 2G bioethanol from lignocellulosic biomass at Tirupati. Yeah, welcome to all. Uh, uh, here uh, we have achieved uh, uh, production of ethanol, uh, rather extraction of ethanol from various uh, lignocellulosic biomass, specifically agricultural waste. Uh, you know, we started with uh, corn cob from the corn seed industries, and then uh, we have also done uh, from bagasse uh, from sugar industries. Also, recently we have forwarded into bamboo, and uh, uh, our research is further going on with a lot of other agricultural waste materials like rices, the vegetable peel waste, or the fruit. Uh, 
uh, peel waste from the juice industries and uh, uh, we also envisage to carry on with uh, major uh, agricultural waste that are available in the agri industries as well. Uh, so now having said that, uh, I am standing in front of one of the most reliable workhorse, the tube manifold reactor that we have evolved uh, during our last one and a half year of this uh, pilot project. So here we produce uh, ethanol to an extent of uh, 10 litres per day with a reactor of 600 litres that we have and we produce 100 kgs of biomass every day. Uh, now coming to the uh, industry adaptability of these technologies that we have evolved here, we have come out with two concepts and also we are envisaging on further more concepts. The first one being add-on reactor for the sugar mills uh, which have got ethanol units already there. Uh, so that this add-on reactor can convert the biomass that is uh, bagasse which is available within their premises and then you know uh, uh, it can add up to the total bio, uh, ethanol production uh, that is produced in that sugar factory. So the second concept uh, coming to that we have also evolved a, a concept called national ethanol reactive pipeline grid. Uh, based on our loop reactor technology for fermentation. This basically works out for those uh, cooperative sugar factories or other smaller sugar factories which does not have the ethanol uh, complex. Uh, so that you know uh, the ethanol is produced in the uh, pipeline uh, while it is getting transported to the OMC's uh, blending depots. So this concept uh, will be very helpful on saving the logistical cost as well as helping out the sugar factories which are in distress which cannot afford the distilleries. It is a common knowledge that sugarcane from the sugarcane sugar cane fields is taken to the sugar factories where sugar is produced from the molasses and from molasses ethanol also can be produced. And it is not known that to everyone that ethanol can be produced from bagasse also. And to this effect based on our tubular manifold reactor we are proposing add-on reactor concept where in a regular sugar factory the sugar is produced from the sugar cane but there is another distillery which produces ethanol. Now the red color is what we are suggesting which has the add-on reactor technology. It is technically called sacrification and overall we can summarize this add-on technology as the uh, green line is for the sugar production, blue line is for the 1G ethanol production and the red line is for the 2G ethanol production. There was a spark of an idea, the National Ethanol Reactive Pipeline Grid. What it meant is that the glucose produced in sugar factories without having a distillery, they can, be, they can supply that glucose water through pipeline to a mega distillery centered at a hub and thereby reduce the transportation cost of the ethanol to the uh, needed location and therefore this reactive pipeline grid is a concept that we are proposing. Regarding the technology readiness level, at pilot plant we are able to produce 10 litres per day of ethanol and we have produced about 3 patents about the sub processes used in producing this ethanol. And our next target is to develop a mid-scale pilot which can produce 1000 litres per day. And eventually we want to scale it up to another 50,000 litres to 100,000 litres per day capacity. And the TRL level probably can be scaled at 7 out of 10. The market for ethanol already exists and particularly to meet the E20 mandate, we need about 10 billion litres or 1000 crore litres of ethanol a year and therefore 2G bioethanol is an attractive source of this ethanol and also 1G ethanol resources like food materials may increase the food prices. Hence, the requirement of 2G bioethanol is need of the hour. Thank you very much for your attention and we will be happy to interact with the scientists and the investors related to the 2G bioethanol production.